Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. This is episode 114 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And in previous episode we have launched, uh, explored a lot, little bit of outer rim and we have designed and launched into the orbit emergency supplies run for our buddy Hansen. And now we have to plan the ejection burn to try and get to Jewel as quickly as possible and bring this much needed supplies to Hansen. And that's the idea anyway. So I'm now planning the ejection burn out of the Kerbin sphere of influence for our emergency supplies ship powered by our newly built Carborundrum drive. Uh, as we are kind of testing with Carborundrum when I was constructing it, I understood that you need a great deal of electricity to produce enough uh, high temperatures to heat up the plasma so the Carborundrum when ignited gets a very nice IS, uh, ISP and you get very nice delta V with not too much Carborundrum. As you saw I'm using a lot but small fuel tanks so imagine what we will be able to do once we when we actually are able to mine Carborundrum and use it for our uh, fueling purposes so I think this will be fantastic and it should definitely power the next generation of our spacecraft among other things. So 5.51 meters or thrust to weight and a total of 3.4 thousand uh, um, delta V that we need to burn to get at this point because we are currently in very unfavorable position compared to Joule but uh, since we have a very good thrust to weight our expected burn should take 1 minute 26 seconds so I just want to make sure that I hold maneuver prograde and then I will be executing the maneuver so yeah I'm using remote tech flight computer for this because this is a probe and beside it can I guess pretty well aim on its own so I can just sit back and enjoy the show and take some pretty pictures as we burn. As you can see, screenshot time. This is fantastic. Screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. Oh, even more beautiful, screenshot. I'll definitely be using one of those for the title of the episode after all. By the way, this is all in four times time acceleration, I believe, so yeah. The burn isn't nearly as long as it was for me, but okay, cool. Now, um, a little bit more and oops. Okay, I might have a little bit overcooked it, so I'm just now trying to correct my trajectory a little bit and trying to get a decent encounter. So we still have plenty of Delta V and this is going on a one-way trip so I don't really care that much about my fuel economy but then again we have to be careful in terms of how much do we really need so yeah this pass is also nice but I think it goes on the wrong side of Jewel and oh boy this is the future me looking at what the hell was my past me thinking <sighs> oh well, who cares? Anyway, let us uh, let us just go ahead and time warp a bit. Beautiful picture as our emergency supplies ship is leaving the Kerbin's sphere of influence. I mean, we're not leaving Sphere of Influence, we just left Kerbin, but it will take some time until we get... Um, until we exit out of the Kerbin Sphere of Influence. I'm thinking, by the way, guys, I'll keep this episode shorter because I want to just have it focused and I'm trying to wrap up the series a little bit because I really want to get into series 2, but um, yeah, I found some bugs, so I don't know. I'm a little bit struggling with like 
uh, if I should keep 1.3 uh, or I'll go with 1.2. I know in the previous episode I said I'll go for the 1.2 and I think I will. I just need that at least my core mods get updated by the time a 1.2 episode should come out. So we'll see. And uh, 1.2 broke a lot of mods, so it has new newer APIs, so it will take a while until the mods pick up and start getting it. At the time of this recording, only ScanSat, as far as I know, was able to update to 1.2. And I'm not sure, given the 1.2, that I will play with ScanSat, because the stock curbnet actually seems very viable to me, so I'm... I'm thinking about it, if I'll go with Scanset or not. Let, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm trying to keep light mod a little bit lighter than the initial one, so I can have different mods. You've seen me how Scanset works, and we have used it a little bit, but I think Curbnet is even greater for setting up and everything. Okay, uh, we're now going to our dual Carbonite Lander. It is closing towards Jewel. As you can see. And pretty soon I want to be switching to the craft because I want it to be able to uh, fine tune its entry into the Jewel's sphere of influence. Okay, I'm gonna stop it here and then let's fly it. Okay. Target jewel, food depleted water. What the hell? Hands on Kerman died of oxygen deprivation. I mean, what the hell? Did I actually forgot to put enough supplies? I knew it had enough, but I thought I've put like. Oh, hold on. I have two rings of supplies. Could it be possible that I forgot to put one ring underneath on the liquid hydrogen tank? Oh, crap. I'm an idiot. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, hands and buddy. I mean, I wish I could say that your death was meaningful, but really, it isn't. I'll just pull a self-destruct on his craft. I'm very sorry, guys. Uh, this was this was definitely not expected. I didn't want this to end this way, this way, but okay. Let us at least time accelerate and get the emergency supplies for the next mission, hopefully. And maybe, who knows, Urlum probe might actually reach its destination. Oh, wait, no, it's still six years out. Jesus, how long does it take to get to Urlum? A decade? Okay, and I'm accelerating at maximum time acceleration, whether you believe me or not, guys. I mean, uh, all other stations have enough supplies for at least, like, I think, three years that I've supplied them without, you know, needing to rely on anything, especially the Duna one that has the most Kerbals. I made sure that that one has plenty of food supplies. But we will be checking that one also shortly. Uh, maybe not in this episode, though. I want to get this now at supplies in the orbit around Jewel. That's my only focus now. Uh, yeah. Orbital Lab 1 food is running out. Okay, I might need to check up on that one at, um, at least. I mean, when it says running out, it still has enough, but um, I might need to do a supply mission later. So, let's switch to it and let's go onwards with it. At this point, I was still, I was still thinking that I already had all the ships transferred in the 1.1.3, so I might as well actually, you know, just continue with 1.1.3 until 1.2 comes out. Uh, I still haven't yet decided, but um, I'll let you know what I, what I think. I'm not, I'm a little bit struggling because 
Uh, by the way, guys, can you tell me what are the, all of the bugs with 1.1.3 and if it makes sense and what things I should avoid? I could really use your, your advice on this. I'm pretty sure some of you have played 1.1.3. I haven't, so... Yeah. Okay, now, given the fact that um, we have um, spent a lot of uh, resources, I'm trying to think that I'll even arrow break around lathe because i mean i have unbreakable antennas and arrow breaking might be fun right and i'm not sure if we have enough delta v to actually properly arrow break around that one but let's see okay uh, let's execute the plan maneuver node 36 meters per second Bam, that's it. We are playing with 180 seconds time delay, so roughly three minutes. And let's see how much it will take us to basically stop in the orbit around lathe. What? 6,261? Whoa, I don't have that much. Hmm. And that's because I went, by the way, guys, in the opposite direction of Jewel, because I'm a freaking idiot. Uh, yeah. I'm starting to become sloppy. Okay, let's just um, pull into the orbit around lathe and let's see if we can arrow break. I'm trying to go for the periapsis of, let's say, maybe 12... 19,000 meters and hopefully 15 to 19,000 meters and I'm hopefully that should be enough to aero break around lathe and then if we have some corrections I'm I don't need to shave off much of the target speed but I need to shave off at least 1,000 or 1 and comma 5,000 of delta v so that I can actually stop using the engines in the lathe orbit I don't really care if I um, I don't really care if I use all of the delta V, but uh, I really want to get stopped around lathe, so. Let's enjoy the dance of the Julian planets as the jewel is coming ever so closer, revealing that I'm going in the wrong direction. Yes, I'm a freaking genius. Uh, let, I think I will call this mission extreme aero break because I think that's what we will be doing we will be going very fast in the orbit around lathe and I'm hoping that I will be able to stop in its orbit and then maybe reverse the orbit as I get there I have never tried this guys but then again it might be worth a shot okay our periapsis height is 1800 meters which is too low I think <clears throat> let's see what the I'm deactivating the antennas and now relying solely on the long range antennas and uh, let's hold the orbit retrograde and we will be shutting off the reactor and taking in panels because we don't want this to get snapped due to possibly very high dynamic pressure of the air underneath us so okay shutting down the reactor in three minutes and we have our uh, lathe encounter pretty soon so let's see how that will go Toggle attach radiators, three minutes until it executes. Okay. Toggling radiators. Snap. And we are holding orbit retrograde, and now it's just a matter of passing lathe, right? So let's us time accelerate a little bit and we come closer around lathe. Hmm. <coughs> Looks scary from this side. Mm, 
what's our lathe encounter and we have a lathe escape in 30 minutes and periapsis in how much? Hmm. Okay, I have put the maneuver note so that three minutes earlier I get the warning. Oh boy. Delete on close and in six minutes we have the lathe encounter so let us just not encounter sorry guys and I'm just now putting a note to myself put a delay of one minute after which I will want to <clears throat> extend the panels and start up the reactor so toggle the attached radiators roughly in three minutes and then uh, because we will be passing in two minutes so after we are out I want immediately to start up the reactor so that we can actually burn so keep our fingers crossed this will be an extreme arrow break screenshot for posterity okay going dangerously close to lead. I think I have set my periapsis to be roughly 15,000 if I'm not mistaken. Diving into the layers of lathe atmosphere and pretty soon we should be experiencing yeah periapsis height is 12,000 oh crap oh ow ow Ow, ow. Oh boy. Okay, that explains how we will continue onwards, I guess. I think I messed it up. Yes. Beautiful. Okay, guys. Well, uh, I'm really tired. I think really <laughs> this makes me more and more motivated to go towards Sirius 2 rather than just play here with Sirius 1, but uh, we'll see how it goes. If you see the Sirius 2 starting after this episode, that just meant I went bored and I wanted to play something with Sirius 2, and if not, I might squeeze one or two more episodes and they'll go immediately to for 1.2. So until next epi episode, like if you like, thank you very much for, for watching, this is Groundforks, signing off.